So I took a little liberties with naming the speech. Share master is a made up term, obviously. But the theme of the speech is about sharing your Toastmasters experience, sharing your Toastmasters experience with other people. So I'm going to persuade all of you, if I'm successful, in sharing your experience and helping us to reach our club's membership goal, 20 members. And the first question that I have is, why are we afraid to share? Why are we afraid to share anything, really? Is it because that it's something that's scarce and we want to keep it for ourselves or hoarding it? Or is it because we're somehow afraid of being judged that if we invest our time in Toastmasters or developing certain skills that people are going to judge us as maybe being inferior in those areas? And then are we afraid of, if we talk about our experience at Toastmasters or, or other experiences such as spirituality, will people somehow feel like we're selling or we're being righteous and we're saying, this is what I do, this is what you should do. And I think a lot of times we fall into that trap where there's a general disdain that people have for selling, unless you're a salesperson. And when we think about Toastmasters and we think about our experience, and we think about the value, and I suspect that on speech following mine, we'll talk about some of the value that Don's gotten from Toastmasters. It's one of those things that it's like, well, why wouldn't you share it? If you think about other things in life that you have of value, if you've gone to a nice restaurant and you tasted something on the menu, you almost immediately want to share that with other people in your family, your friends, maybe coworkers that you're close to when you talk about food. If you have something that is a service that you have uh, done at your home, maybe it's a cleaning service or somebody sweeps your chimney, somebody does something nice for you, you want to share that because the people that you care about can benefit from that as well. And so the value of Toastmasters is, I think, huge. And aside from the guests, and maybe Karen is a little bit unique since she's a returning Toastmaster and an experienced Toastmaster, Bill hopefully will become a Toastmaster, consider becoming a Toastmaster. But we're all here because we see value. Because let's face it, probably the single most valuable thing that we have in Maybe we don't think in terms of this, depending on your value system, is time. If you think about it, time is the one commodity that's a limited amount of, and you only have so much time. So I want to take Toastmasters and compare that to two other life experiences that I've had and say, well, how does Toastmasters stack up? Because there's other ways that I can get communication and leadership skills. I don't need to go to Toastmasters to do that. And one of those is actually when I worked at General Electric where Raj works at the Global Research Center, we had a presentation program that was part of an overall training program that GE did. And it was a 10-week program. We met once a week, about eight participants, and we gave prepared speeches. The instructor would do round-robin evaluations, so we'd do peer reviews, and the instructor would give a recap. And we'd do that each week, and we did that for a series of 10 weeks, and it was great. It was a really good format. It was the first time outside of some of the speeches that we had to give in high school where we got public speaking experience in a business context. And it was great. The second one was at Bellcore, which used to be Bell Labs, and they had a world-class leadership succession program where they had a presentation skills development segment of that. And they had a two-day immersion workshop where you would actually go on stage at the culmination of the two days and you'd give a speech to a live audience on a raised platform you'd be videotaped and then you'd get feedback from the peers and the instructors. So it was very formal, very specialized instructor taught it. I will say, although both of those were very good programs, both of them were mandated as part of the programs I was in, I have to say that neither one of them really held a candle to Toastmasters and I say that with all sincerity. And I've said this to people that have been researching Toastmasters for companies. GE, as we know, has active clubs. We know State Farm, so two of the largest employers, Pitney Bowes, which used to be a large employer, or is a large employer. So companies recognize the value. Individuals recognize the value. And the reason that Toastmasters is so much better than those programs is because of two dimensions. One is that it's continuous. So twice a month, we all have the opportunity to come here. Every meeting we could either present or, in some cases, do a leadership or both if, if there's double duty required. So it's a great opportunity that is regular, consistent, 
And more importantly, the second dimension, which I don't know with any other place that you can get, actually the expertise. And if you look around in this room at the collective expertise in terms of people's presentation and leadership, years of experience, talking decades, maybe centuries of experience. <laughs> so, this experience, I think, makes Toastmasters a unique experience, and I highly recommend it to anybody that's considering whether it's just coming and meeting interesting people, hearing interesting stories. Some of the best stories I've ever heard have been in the last six months in my participation in this club, as well as some of the contests that this club participates in. My call to ShareMaster is that if each one of the 16 active members that we have today could share their experience in a meaningful way, with three people. Share your experience, most importantly, what value you get out of Toastmasters. Don't be afraid. Share it. You're going to give them some value. You don't have to sell them. They, they're adults. They can make up their own minds. You can redirect them to me. You can redirect them to John. One of us can talk with them and, and answer any questions they have. And then the second call to ShareMaster is to, and I was going to say invite, but that's too easy. Make a commitment, a personal commitment, to bring a guest. So talk to three people about your experience, make a commitment to bring a guest, preferably before the end of the Toastmaster year. So I know that we've got Thanksgiving and a number of other holidays that follow. So realistically, in the next three meetings, it won't be possible for everybody. But if we do that, and follow the simple math, if we do that, one in four, of those 16 become members, which is 25%, very, very reasonable given the high value, then we'll hit our membership goal. And more importantly to me than hitting our membership goal is the simple equation that I'll call the fun factor. More members equals more fun. And Toastmaster?